and welcome to Three Questions with an Expert. I'm Arielle Campanelli, editor for GIE Media's Manufacturing Group. Today I'm here with Scott Sevchak, director for Manufacturing Platform at uh, Stratasys. How are you doing today? I'm um, very well, thank you. Good. Can you talk a little bit about what you do for Stratasys? Sure. So my role at Stratasys has been to work with our aerospace, automotive, and defense customers to really understand their needs in manufacturing and help bring forward new platforms, new systems, new technologies and solutions that enable additive manufacturing to be used more and more in manufacturing applications. Wonderful, wonderful. So can you talk a little bit about how Stratasys is uniquely positioning itself to meet the challenges in the manufacturing industry today? Certainly. So Stratasys has been around as far as additive manufacturing companies go, a long time. We were one of the first. Uh, we've been around nearly 30 years since fused deposition modeling was invented. Most of that time has been focused on rapid prototyping, as all additive technologies have been. But a number of years ago, we saw more and more pull, uh, specifically from the aerospace industry and increasingly from others, to use our technologies in the manufacturing space. So first for fixtures, jigs, forming tools, uh, things like that. And then in more recent times, uh, moving towards production parts. So where we've been able to be is working with our customers closely. And instead of uh, being at the stage today where we're looking at moving into manufacturing, we're in manufacturing and we're looking how to work with our customers and move much more deeply into manufacturing. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so Stratasys is demonstrating its next generation technologies at IMTS. I was at your booth and it was very impressive. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about those technologies? Certainly. Uh, so it's been very exciting to show uh, these technologies. These are both uh, pieces of equipment that have been in work for some time and have been the result of direct feedback from customers and what they need in order to expand on what they can do today and really push to the next level. So the first of the two demonstrators is called the Infinite Build 3D Demonstrator. And with this, what we've done is instead of the normal 3D printer that prints on a table, uh, we print on the wall. So we've turned the 3D printing on its side, which allows us to build as long in one direction as we want. We can continue building right out of the oven in which we're building. If we're going to build something very large, we certainly need to accelerate the process of 3D printing. We need to print much, much faster. So we've developed new techniques for extrusion to enable ourselves to print uh, an order of magnitude faster than we have previously uh, and do so in a much more controlled and reliable way because these parts, these larger parts that are intended for production use in aerospace and in automotive uh, need to have the consistency and the repeatability uh, those industries, those high requirements industries demand. The second demonstrator is the robotic composite 3D demonstrator. And much like with the first demonstrator where we uh, turned 3D printing on its side, in the robotic composite demonstrator, we've taken it completely outside the box. And we've broken the layer by layer mentality entirely. So instead of printing layer by layer from the bottom up, we print from the inside out. We're able to use eight degrees of freedom instead of just printing in individual planes. We do this with a robotic motion system, a six-axis robot, two-axis positioner table, to allow us to uh, create new geometries and reinforce geometries in different directions. We use composite materials, which are directional materials. If you're printing layer by layer with directional materials, all of your strength is in that plane of deposition. To take full advantage of that material set, we need to align materials in any direction, and that's why we bring in the robotic motion control to truly print in three dimensions. And we've done both of these systems with partners. So the Infinite Build 3D demonstrator, Boeing, was an early partner in this system, uh, really driving the initial requirement set. Uh, more recently, Ford has also joined uh, our team in developing this system and bringing it forward uh, into production. With the robotic composite demonstrator, uh, we needed a, to work with a very strong partner in industry that had a good workflow solution as well as good motion control solution. Uh, so we've been working very closely with Siemens in order to bring that system out onto the factory floor. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's really important um, what you guys are doing in the industry, and it's, it's cool to see. Very cool. Um, so can you share some specific ex examples of 3D printing um, manufacturing applications that you are doing with Stratasys? Certainly. So some of the applications I mentioned already in terms of fixturing and jigs, uh, those applications have been in use for a number of years, and we've seen them uh, very predominantly in aerospace. We've been in um, aircraft manufacturing plants where there are literally thousands of printed tools being used uh, in materials like ABS and polycarbonate uh, to hold workpieces, uh, to um, uh, be used as drill guides, drill fixtures, 
to uh, locate, uh, locate features on parts. Uh, we've seen that also in automotive, where we have uh, Opal, for example, has taken uh, heavy uh, metallic fixtures uh, used for placing components on an assembly and replaced them with very light plastic uh, uh, fixtures that are very similar but more ergonomic and easier to use on the factory floor. And they can be adjusted, they can be tailored in a continuous improvement mindset to identify opportunities to improve that fixture and change it uh, at any point in its life cycle. Uh, we also see the use of composite tooling, uh, particularly in aerospace. As vehicles become more and more uh, composite in their build materials, uh, we need new ways to a tool for those to build complex geometries quickly, uh, as well as to repair. So composite repair tools, uh, and we've seen those with a number of both the business jet and uh, and uh, major OEM uh, producers of aircraft. And finally, with production parts. So there are production parts flying today of a number of technologies and on a number of platforms around the world. One of the most exciting is certainly United Launch Alliance has qualified our Ultim 9085 material in the FDM process for flight parts on the Atlas V rocket. So since earlier this year, since March of this year, they have been flying uh, dozens of parts on each Atlas V that launches, uh, parts that are used for delivering air conditioning to avionics equipment, for example, so ducting systems, closeout panels, and a number of other applications where they have the ability to replace a metal component uh, with a plastic component and typically consolidate an assembly and remove a significant number of parts. Wonderful, wonderful. Like I said, I was at your booth uh, earlier, and it's just, it's really cool to see all the things that you guys are doing. It's I'm great. glad to hear that uh, that you had a positive response to it. We certainly have been uh, seeing uh, uh, a lot of customers that are hopefully having a very similar response. Yes, yes, for sure. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank, thank you. you. For more information about Stratasys, visit their website, stratasys.com. I'm Ariel Campanelli with three questions with an expert. Stay tuned for more interviews to come.